What if the very sources we rely on for facts and understanding were under the control of powerful alliances? A thought-provoking question indeed. It forces us to consider a reality where the flow of information, the very lifeblood of our knowledge-driven society, is regulated by public-private partnerships. So, what exactly are these public-private partnerships? They are collaborations between government entities and private sector companies. These partnerships leverage the strengths of both sectors to achieve a common goal. The private sector brings innovation, efficiency, and capital, while the public sector provides regulatory oversight and safeguards public interest. Now let's consider the term authoritative sources. These are the bastions of verified information, the go-to entities for reliable knowledge. They could be academic institutions, research organizations, government bodies, or reputable media outlets. Their pronouncements are usually taken as the final word in their respective fields. But what happens when these two concepts intertwine? When public-private partnerships begin to control these authoritative sources, the implications are far-reaching. The dissemination of knowledge, the spread of information, and even the definition of truth itself may become subject to the interests and agendas of these powerful alliances. Imagine a world where the facts you learn, the news you read and the scientific advancements you marvel at are all filtered through the lens of a select few entities. These entities driven by their own motivations could potentially shape the narrative to fit their desired outcomes. The power to control information is, in essence, the power to control perception and ultimately the power to control society. However alarming this may sound, it's important to remember that not all public-private partnerships are malevolent. Many have been instrumental in driving progress and innovation, but the potential misuse of such partnerships to control authoritative sources is a concern that warrants our attention. As we delve into this topic, we should remain vigilant and question who really controls the information we consume. To better understand this concept, let's examine a case study. Picture this. A multinational pharmaceutical corporation funds an extensive research study on the efficacy of a new drug they've developed. This corporation, let's call it PharmaCorp, has a massive vested interest in the success of this drug. The study is conducted by a respected research team in a renowned university. The findings? The drug is effective and the study is published in a prestigious scientific journal. But let's delve deeper. The research team, despite its respected standing, was financed by PharmaCorp. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that the study is flawed or biased, but it does raise some questions. Could the researchers have felt pressured to produce favorable results? Could the analysis of the data have been subtly skewed to present the drug in the best light? Moreover, the scientific journal where the study was published holds a position of authority in the scientific community. Its publications are considered authoritative sources. But who controls what gets published in this journal? Again, we find a web of connections. The journal's editorial board includes members who hold significant stock in PharmaCorp. This case doesn't prove corruption or intentional manipulation, but it does highlight the potential influence that public-private partnerships can have on the control of authoritative sources. The very definition of what is considered an authoritative source can be shaped by these partnerships. The subtle interplay of power, influence, and vested interests can potentially distort the truth. This distortion isn't necessarily intentional or malicious. It could be as simple as a subconscious bias towards results that favor the funding source. This is not to say that all corporate-funded research is flawed or biased, but it is crucial to recognize the potential for bias and manipulation. We need to question the sources of our information and the motivations behind them. This case study brings to light the quiet control that these partnerships can exert over what we consider to be authoritative sources. But how does this control influence our perceptions and beliefs, you may ask? Well, it all boils down to a logical fallacy known as the appeal to authority. This fallacy occurs when someone argues that a claim must be true simply because a perceived authority or expert on the issue has said it is. It's a shortcut in our thinking, a mental heuristic that can easily be manipulated. Consider how this might work. Let's say in our case study, a report is published by a public-private partnership claiming that a certain policy is the best course of action. The partnership is seen as an authority due to its influence and resources. Consequently, the report is taken at face value by many, implicitly trusted because of the authority the partnership holds. But here's the kicker. Just because someone or something is in a position of authority doesn't automatically make their claims true or their advice sound. Expertise in one field does not guarantee expertise in another, and even experts can be wrong. 
The validity of a claim should always rest on the strength of the argument and the evidence, not on who's making the claim. This appeal to authority fallacy can be a powerful tool for manipulating public opinion. If the authority is perceived as credible, their statements can shape perceptions and beliefs, even if those statements are not grounded in solid evidence or sound reasoning. This is not to say that all appeals to authority are fallacious. Experts, after all, are experts for a reason. However, it is important to remember that authority should not be the sole reason for accepting a claim. We should always critically evaluate the evidence backing up the claim, the logic of the argument, and the potential biases of the source. So, we see that the control exerted by public-private partnerships over authoritative sources can be a double-edged sword, potentially, leading to the propagation of misinformation under the guise of expert opinion. Knowing this, it's crucial to question the sources of our information and the motivations behind them. So, what does this all mean for society at large? Well, controlling authoritative sources is not just about managing the flow of information or shaping narratives. It's about influencing the collective consciousness, the very way we think and perceive the world. Consider this. When a select few control what is deemed authoritative, they essentially filter the information that reaches us. They decide what is worthy of our attention and what is not. This control can shape societal narratives, influencing our opinions, our values, and even our behavior. But it doesn't stop there. This control extends to the suppression of dissenting voices, the ones that question the status quo or offer alternative perspectives. When these voices are silenced or discredited, it results in a lack of transparency, a distortion of truth. And in such a climate, misinformation can thrive, further muddying the waters of our understanding. Moreover, this control can stifle scientific progress. Science thrives on questioning, on challenging existing ideas, and coming up with new ones. But when only certain voices are heard, when only certain ideas are considered worthy, it limits the scope of scientific inquiry. It limits the potential for innovation, for groundbreaking discoveries. It's a dangerous game, this control of authoritative sources. It's a game that can shape our perception of reality, our understanding of truth. It's a game that can manipulate our thoughts, our beliefs, and ultimately, our actions. But it's not a game without consequences. It can lead to a society that's uninformed, that's manipulated, that's stripped of its capacity for critical thinking. It can lead to a society that's complacent, that's accepting of whatever narrative is handed to it. In essence, controlling authoritative sources is not just about controlling information. It's about controlling minds. It's about shaping our reality, our perception of truth. It's about deciding what we know, what we believe, and what we do. The power to control authoritative sources is not just about information. It's about controlling the very way we think. In conclusion, it's clear that public-private partnerships have the potential to exert significant control over authoritative sources. This power, as we've explored, can shape the very definition of what we consider authoritative. The partnerships between public entities and private corporations can essentially dictate the publications and information that are deemed authoritative, thereby influencing our perception of knowledge and truth. We delved into a compelling case study that underscored this point, illustrating the significant influence these partnerships can have. The case study highlighted that not only can these partnerships control the narrative, but they can also manipulate it, sometimes subtly, and other times quite overtly. The implications of this control are far-reaching, impacting everything from academic discourse to public policy. This brings us to the logical fallacy of appeals to authority. We often take for granted that an authoritative source is inherently correct or unbiased, Yet, as we've seen, this is not always the case. The power structures that govern these authoritative sources can, and often do, sway the information they present. It's a subtle form of persuasion that can distort our understanding and acceptance of facts and evidence. The societal implications of this are profound. The control exerted by public-private partnerships over authoritative sources can potentially shape the collective consciousness of a society. It's a form of mind control that operates under the guise of science and scholarship, subtly influencing our beliefs, opinions, and actions. As we navigate the information age, it's essential to scrutinize our sources, question authority, and strive for transparency in all areas of knowledge and information. Knowledge is power, and we must ensure that this power is not monopolized by a select few. Let's continue to ask questions, seek out diverse perspectives, and challenge the status quo, because only then can we truly foster a society built on transparency, critical thinking, and informed decision-making. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. 
Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.